Ms. Cardinal. Um, I will try to keep the composure on stage. Leah has been very clear that I have under five minutes. <laughs> I spent so many nights here with James trying to convince him that the house speech should be shorter than the show. <laughs> in Pippin, actually, which Michael was in when that house speech went on and on, and after the show, I said, James, your house speech was so long that the kid in front of me grew up. <laughs> and he said, without missing a beat, another miracle of education. <laughs> and it's hard to be in this room and see so many of you and not know that you are the accomplishment. That the lives we have <laughs> I'll, I'll get there. <laughs> the lives we have and the people we've become are because he could see that in us. He would not want me to speak about his accomplishment. It's just the beginning of us. <laughs> he would not want me to speak about his accomplishment without talking about his family, who he loved ferociously. Matthew and Leah who inspired him, made him so proud, and challenged him. His grandchildren, who he was in awe of. He could only see perfection in them. And Polly, who gave words to his vision, context for his ideas, and by the miracle of the loves and fishes fed all of us when we were most hungry. I should also speak of the farm as an accomplishment. It took a whole generation to clear that land of trees and trees. <laughs> it only took James 30 years to reclaim it for trees and rocks and vision and artists. The farm was so special to him because it could be simultaneously what he could imagine it would be and what it was. I'll speak quickly of his life. He was born in Akron, Ohio. He would not mind if I spoke of his childhood with this. He read romances, studied cloud formations in the lazy afternoon, and instead of reading textbooks, tried to memorize the moon. He loved the church and its music and its ritual. He excelled at singing and performing. He was always more intrigued by the bad kids than the good kids. When the girls in his homeroom would sing Jim Dandy to the rescue, he would turn bright red. And up until last Christmas, he would tell the story of the girls in the homeroom singing Jim Dandy to the rescue, and he would sing the whole song and turn the right red. <laughs> he was both inspired by and embarrassed by the artistic intensity of his teacher, Bud Thomas. And in later life, he would talk about how his admiration for him became what he would model in his own teaching. He went to Bowling Green University as an undergraduate. Several teachers there inspired him, and he started to see the world in terms of its artistic potential. He became good friends with his roommate, Rube Stalton, and talked a lot about the parties they threw. Not because they were parties, but because they were theme parties, and he could transform his lowly space into a place where the magic of a party could happen. <laughs> He started teaching in 1966 at Jackson Memorial High School. He was inspired by and befriended the students there, and something magic started there that never stopped. Where James Thornton was teaching, the students were amazingly talented. He met there so many of the people in this room. Richard Hensel, Greg Artzer, Marcy Mulder, Kathy Jones, I could go on and on, but I've got less than five minutes. It is those students who inspired him that became the basis for many of the next projects. And it's a testament to his ability to connect, not just in the moment, 
but in a real true way that brings us here today and some of those folks meeting him at 15 here at 60 years old. He went to Kent State University for graduate school. Um, he acted. He spoke often of performing Brand by Henry, Henry Ibsen, and he was Brand. Although my primary memory of this is that every time we would sit down to eat, he would say to Pauline, the people are hungry. <laughs> During this time, he started a cabaret at Friar Tuck's, and with a bunch of the people in here, including David Pretty and Pauline, that cabaret morphed into the Kent Acting and Touring Company. I really do believe if the Kent Acting and Touring Company had been all James did, as an artist, it would have been enough. He transformed the community, and he pulled out of the woodwork people like me, who had never seen theater, really, didn't really know what it was, but our lives were changed forever because of it. This was a theater company that did not have a theater. And like he did so many times, he turned that deficit into an asset, and he found spaces and transformed each of those spaces into the perfect place for a show. Often with Sarah Smith making music on found pianos. My first memory is of Godspell, which was performed in churches and opera houses all over Ohio. And then these are completely out of order. But A Christmas Carol at Hannah Hills in the Solarium, I Do, I Do, and Dracula in an Old Family Home, Bus Stop in a 50 style Shelter House, Old Coward at several bars, including one where we shared the dressing room with strippers. <laughs> Dennis Beals Fight on the Isle in a storefront in Ravenna, Ohio. The Fantastics in Kent's Abandoned Train Depot. Several productions in a storefront called the Club of Car Theater. These were not only terrific theatrical events, they were transformative of space and community, which is what I think is the greatest thing we can do in theater. Ken Hagen and Turing Company had an offshoot called Yellow Bar Workshops, which took much of the spirit and the aesthetics of Ken Hagen and Turing Company and put it on the farm. And then James came to Shaker Heights High School in 1979. He brought with him these skills of audience building, of artistic direction, of producing, and an aesthetic that was well on its way to being developed, and a clarity for educational vision. He knew where he wanted this to go. In the first few years, I must say that I felt very much like Sancho to James's Don Quixote. <laughs> he seemed absolutely unaware of the fact that people were completely befuddled by what he was doing here. <laughs> I will leave some of the alumni to speak to how that turned out. But, not only did the area recognize his work, the National Council of English Teachers recognized this as a center of excellence in education. James was honored by Northern Ohio Live, by Young Audiences, and with the Governor's Award for the Arts. Ultimately, I think Greg Artsner wrote a note that sums, out, sums up what so many of us feel, and I'll paraphrase it here. We do nothing beautiful, powerful, or successful as artists that isn't somehow rooted in the things we learned from him, both as a teacher and a friend. Great accomplishment. Thank you, James.